Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Masood Olia, and I'm a professor at uh, Wentworth University in the um, School of Engineering. I'm here with um, another video, but this time, instead of talking about um, equations, solving problems, um, I was thinking of uh, showing you uh, just the basic of Simulink. Uh, uh, Simulink is a toolbox of MATLAB uh, that is widely used uh, almost uh, everywhere in uh, schools, uh, industry, and so on. And Simulink in particular is just using a graphical environment. Uh, basically, you can model different systems, mechanical system, electrical system, hydraulic systems, um, financial systems, and so on. Uh, so uh, basically what I wanna show you is just a very, uh, in a very short video, uh, you know, a simple, uh, you know, how you can just bring, you know, blocks and, you know, be able to display the output. And I was thinking of showing you maybe a, a sine wave, right? So if you have a, a sine of some uh, sine wave, say with the frequency of four radians per second. So this is the basically frequency in radians per second. On the mechanical side, we like to use radians per second. Electricals uh, like the Hertz cycle per second or revolution per second. And maybe we put an amplitude of two, whatever, two could be two pound, could be two meters, depending on what, uh, you know, subjects you're talking about. So, uh, and then uh, this, how could we display this? So you'll see in a minute that we have something called a scope uh, and we can display this. We can actually add multiple signals if we want. So we can have another sine wave, maybe a uh, sine uh, 80 with a different amplitude, maybe five. And then how we can, you know, add these two signals actually, right? And then put it through the, uh, the display, uh, you know, scope. Uh, so basically I wanna go back, to, uh, go to MATLAB and in the MATLAB environment, uh, let me actually move my, cam, you know, my picture somewhere else. So in the MATLAB, when you get the prompt, there, there are two ways that you can get the, uh, a simulink is started. You can either go to the simulink right here and click on that, or you can just type simulink. So I'll go ahead and type simulink. And it could take, you know, depending on your, um, you know, the power of your computer, I'm using a very uh, uh, kind of uh, small surface with not much memory um, here. The reason I'm using surface because I could you know, write on it, obviously. So it, it will take a minute or two. And once the Simulink starts, uh, we can then uh, show you, you know, how things are going to work out. All right, so once we get the Simulink, and by the way, my MATLAB is a version 2020. Um, you know, you, version 2018, uh, I don't think much has changed in terms of the uh, Simulink and presentations. All right, so what you wanna do, you wanna start with a blank model. So click on that and you'll just get a window, just an empty uh, workspace that you can start creating your model. Of course, we are not doing really a model today. I just wanna uh, show you, you know, just some basic things in the Simulink. All right, so you get something like this. What you wanna do is to immediately go to the library browser right here and click on that and get your library browser. So this is all the blocks that you need in order to create your model. Most of the things that we want are in the commonly used block. So if you click on that, you'll get commonly used block, which is basically different things, you know, integrator block, you know, scope, uh, the uh, signals and so on. Now I can also tell you that for basic control systems and modeling continuous blocks are what you really need, uh, specifically the transfer function right here is very useful. Uh, so basically for today uh, short video, I wanna just show you uh, just blocks that we can generate the signal and then display it. So that uh, signals are in the sources. So if you click on the sources, 
right? So what you see here is basically um, your uh, different sources uh, and you see a constant, you see, uh, and uh, as I show you, let me just go down. Uh, I want the sine wave. So the sine wave is right here. So what you do is very simple guys, just click on that and drag and drop. So I'm gonna just drag that guy over to my workspace here. And as I said, my surface is very, very weak in terms of power. So here we go. This is the sine wave. You can actually we can make it a little bit larger for you. So if you double click on this sine wave, um, you see you can put the amplitude here. A minute ago, I said, what do I want? I want to have an amplitude of two, right? And a frequency of four. So let's go back and get that. So amplitude of two and a frequency. And by the way, you have the option of radians per second. In this case is a radians per second. So you just want to put uh, four radians per second and just say apply and okay. Now, how could we see if this signal is what we want? So as I said, the scope is what you want. So going back to commonly used blocks, uh, or in this case, now we're gonna go to the sinks, right? And what we need is just a basic scope. So I'm just gonna click on that, drag and drop. Kind of enlarge this. And how do we connect? It's very simple. Just click on this arrow and connect them. You can go either from left to the right or from right to the left, from the scope to the uh, signal or from sine wave to the, uh, the scope. Okay. So uh, basically you're ready to run it. So basically uh, the, the uh, time is, uh, is it's, you just run it for 10 seconds. You can change that, make it 20 seconds, five seconds, whatever you like. And then you just click on the run if there's no problem. And of course, for something as simple as this, there shouldn't be any problem. Otherwise you will come with a warning and error. All right, and it's compiling it as you can see. Uh, and we're ready. If you double click on the, the scope, you'll see your signal, you see your sine wave. And it's taken a while because of the nature of this computer. So here we go. This is a sine wave with a frequency of four radians per second and an amplitude of two, you see? Two to negative two. Remember the maximum of a sine wave is what? If the, um, it's just two sine 40, if you put, if that time becomes pi over two, the maximum sine 90 is one times two. So the maximum would two or negative two. Right, so as you could see, let me open this scope a little bit for you. So you see that uh, it is very kind of, uh, it's not refined, it's, the res resolution is bad. So what you wanna do is, actually let's minimize this. You wanna go under uh, the, um, your uh, model here, where is our, and this is under, uh, Gonna go back to our simulation. And this is a little bit different than my 2018. So you could actually, uh, let's see, modeling, uh, model setting. Let's see, what do we get here? So I should have used probably the 2018 version. All right, here we go. The uh, data import export. So if you do additional parameters here, you can do a refined factor of maybe uh, 1000. Okay. And let's run it one more time. And look at the scope again. Look at that. It's much nicer, right? And then you can do different things here. Like this is already uh, auto scale. Uh, you could actually see if you click on this guy at this, at this icon, uh, you can bring um, 
let's see the um, I keep doing this again this is the nature of the surface I guess uh, so here we go the, you see your measurements here you could uh, you know move these cursors you know here uh, you know, if you want to see the uh, peak to peak, you can bring this guy over here and settle it here. And then maybe this one, bring it here to see what the frequency, if the frequency is what you're supposed to get. There we go. And you can adjust those numbers here if you know exactly what you want. So this gives you some information. Uh, other things that you can get out of this uh, probably are you could change the coloring scheme if you go to the uh, right here. So under that setting configuration properties. Uh, and um, once that opens up, okay, which it looks like it will take a while. Well, meanwhile, I'm gonna get rid of that. Let me see, I'm gonna try it one more time. Let's see if that opens up and um, we could change the coloring scheme if you don't like the coloring uh, and so on. All right, looks like it is a stock. So now let me go back and now let me just do two signals for you now. So let's say you wanna get two signals and maybe add them up. How about that? So let's say we have this Sign wave, you can, oh, by the way, just copy that, control C, and then do a control V, right? So maybe I'll make this signal a little bit different, right? If I double click on it, uh, I'll make the amplitude maybe uh, five and make the frequency. Remember the other one had a frequency of four radians per second. I'll make it maybe 10 radians per second, right? And I say, okay. Now, how could we add two uh, signals together? So we just bring, uh, going back to the browser, uh, library browsers, uh, we can go to the commonly used blocks and bring a sum. By the way, you could check for them, uh, you know, search for them, sum, right? And a summing juncture would be one of these. So. Just bring that this guy over here, right? Right now there are two inputs here. So actually you can add two things. So we could do this. We could just connect this guy to this one and this guy to this one. And let me move this up a little bit. And then the output goes to the scope. And now we are adding what? Two sine waves, right? So let's run and Let's take a look at this scope. Look, this is the sum of the two. And by the way, we already changed the resol resolution. So uh, it looks good. So it's well refined. So again, if you click on this guy, you could again, you know, uh, see some of the uh, 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 information in terms of the amplitude and so on. Uh, I don't know why the coloring, this guy didn't work here. I, again, I'm using a 2020 and 2020 apparently is a little bit different or it's maybe it's my surface that is not, is acting up. Let's take a look at this guy. It's not, well, it just gave me something here. Uh, but you could actually change the axis coloring and so on, right? Let's apply that and see what happens. See, it changed the, the background of it or maybe the, the box itself uh, and so on. Uh, so this is this was, guys, remember a very short video uh, that I wanted to show you quickly. Um, of course, we can do a lot of things. Uh, I will come back maybe with a video that we'll talk about a simple, um, say, um, mass spring system. I'll show you what the differential equation of this system is. And then maybe we can, you know, hit it with some force, right? As a function of time, maybe a sine wave, right? And see how this mass is gonna move to the left and right. And then how you, you could model something like this as simple as this, 
uh, using Simulink. Uh, and there are different ways to do that. And I will show you that. Now you have to understand that I am not an expert on Simulink. I know just the basic things, uh, but you know, sometimes you just need to know the basic things. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, even though some of the things didn't work out. Uh, and that happens because I, as I said, I was using the 2018 version and this was the 2020 and my surface is not, you know, quick in responding. Uh, but as, as, as always guys, if you like the video, please subscribe and I'll come up with new videos. Thank you again, have a good day.